Star Drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It is Monday, September 18th, and so happy for you joining us. We are ready to start another week together with the Lord. So subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. Today we have an exciting podcast for you. We got two G talks with Eddie Kwan, the Sunday message word study, and of course commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. All right, everyone. Yes, it is Monday. It's another week. Uh, it's the third week of September, as crazy as that sounds. But I hope everyone had a great weekend and Sunday service. Uh, if you haven't yet, go ahead, leave a like and comment to build our community. Just super happy for everyone joining us every weekday on the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up and support each other each and every day. This week's Sunday message title, Learn From Me, Jesus. There are no lies in love. And find the first love and such a powerful message it was this week. And I hope that everyone received a ton of grace, a ton of piercing, a good time. Even It helps us even more with the 70-day prayer condition. And this will be something we can push forward in till the end of this year. Like, man, can you guys believe it? It's already the third week of, of September. It's the 18th, which means we're, we're 12 days away. 12 days from October, less than two weeks and it's pretty crazy and intense because I'm just like, man, this time is going fast. Uh, we've already reached uh, the, like, we're getting to this. We're already into the last 12 days of September. I am stunned, shocked, bewildered. All these things compared, you know, just put together as one. These are things that I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy, right? And I hope that now we have these, uh, you know, the seven-day prayer condition. Let's finish strong. Let's really finish strong, and especially with this week's message, I think we can finish really strong with our repentance prayer. Lots to repent, lots to think about. The first love, finding the first love, all these other different things. I'm just like, man, what a crazy message it was. So, uh, like, let me just, like, a couple things that happened to me over the weekend. Um, I had a birthday party for one of the campus members, and uh, they just turned 20 years old. So I'm just like, ugh, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I am like more than double this person's age, but we had a fun time. It was really fun. We went to an escape room. I'm not sure if you guys have ever been to one before. Uh, we went to an escape room on the weekend, like on Saturday night. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's pretty intense. Like you get like 50 minutes to, you know, escape a room with all the clues and stuff in it. And uh, it, it was difficult. And the reason it's so difficult is because it's just a different way of thinking. It's like the Sherlock Holmes way. It's like doing it in a certain style and way, perceiving certain things that you never normally would have thought of in that way, right? It was, you know, it was difficult. Uh, my, I've only been to uh, escape room once and I had, I think it was in Korea. I went once in Korea and uh, I had a friend over there who's very, very experienced in it that we went through it together and that, you know, you're kind of able to learn as you go. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's difficult. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Just the frustration of trying to figure out what the heck are we supposed to do next? And even though it was, uh, it was really, really difficult. Um, the team one that the team that I was in was a group of four of us, me and three campus members. Like we were, Oh, me and three campus. Yeah. Me and three campus members. We were able to escape with two minutes remaining on the clock. Right. So I was super happy about that. We finally made it. Like it wasn't as easy as we thought it was. Like, especially when we get to the very, very end, we're like, oh, what's going on? How come it's not working? And then finally, you have to figure those things out too. So I was super happy about that also. But yeah, two minutes remaining. We did it in like 47 minutes and some odd seconds. So like uh, we had two, two minutes and some odd uh, seconds remaining. So I was crazy happy about that. Uh, that we didn't completely fail. We didn't have to like get someone to come in and let us out. And, uh, you know, because like uh, they were telling us that, yeah, there are those that fail. They fail and they just can't get out of it. And uh, you're able to get up to three hints. We used all three hints because we're like confused at certain points. Like, what? That doesn't make any sense. So I'm just thankful we got out. And uh, like like I said, it's only the second time I've tried it. We had four people. And I think the next time I go, I would definitely want to do it with just two people. I think two people is perfect. Like two people doing it together. 
plus uh, maybe three, three max. But I think two people would be the best. Like uh, because you know, when you have four people, the level of communication that needs to be done, trying to and we don't know what to do. So trying to tell people what to do, what to get, and stuff like that. That is something that we look at and it's like, oh, okay, we didn't see that coming. So it was it was pretty uh, intense. It was intense. 50, 48, uh, 47 minutes and some odd seconds of uh, going through that. And I, uh, like I said, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I'm not sure, if, have you guys ever been to an uh, uh, escape room before? Like, um, the one we went to was uh, not difficult. It was medium difficulty, right? And uh, it was medium difficulty and only of the three of us, I think I'm the only one. No, no, me and the other guy have only been to one each. So it actually, it actually worked out pretty well. Yeah, so I don't know. Tell me what you guys think about it. That'd be kind of cool to have these escape rooms. And like, I remember when I was at um, Whitestone, they, oh no, 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 when it was Lord's Church, they, they made an escape room. They made one. They made an escape room at the top so that they could bring newcomers and join the escape room trying to figure out how to get out of that place too. So I thought that was a very ingenious idea. But yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. A lot of thinking, a lot of like frustration. Like, what? what's next? What's next? What's next? So yeah, that's that's what I went through. Oh, and I played soccer on Friday. Oh my goodness. I played soccer and I played with, uh, I found those uh, old Chinese guys. Well, when I say old Chinese guys, you know what the funny thing is? These old Chinese guys are my age. <laughs> And I say old Chinese guys, but they're all around my age. The difference is they look a lot older and they're married. They have like kids and stuff like that. They've been through the ringer, right? So it was just like, it's fun because I get to, I, I, I know them well. There's, they got high skill level, but they're, um, they're not like super strong or fast, right? So it gives me an ability to, you know, I, I have somewhat of an advantage. So, uh, but I enjoyed it a lot. But the next day I was sore as sore. Like I had trouble uh sitting down on the toilet no no that's too much information so i had trouble like just sitting down on a chair <laughs> oh man i already said it <laughs> yeah so yeah it, it, it was difficult and but uh, you know like it's uh on sunday uh legs are much better now i'm gonna go play some soccer again today you know because i gotta get these final two weeks to prepare for this soccer tournament so i'm super super thankful uh, that i'm able to get some more runs in before uh we go to that soccer tournament uh which is in two weeks it's 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 on the the first weekend of October, which is crazy because it's 12 days away, which is so, it's, I don't know guys, I don't know about you, I am mind blown of how fast 2023 is going, and I'm thankful that it's going by fast, but I'm also, uh, the way that the, the word teaches us, it's like, this is the opportunity, you know what I mean? So, it's going by fast, which I'm thankful for because it's such a crazy and rough, you know, tumultuous year. But on the flip side, I'm like, but God is telling us this is the opportunity. God is telling us this is the chance we have kind of thing. So for me, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Like, I'm so happy it's moving fast. But then I'm like, but what about these opportunities I'm missing out on? Am I missing out on this opportunity? Am I missing out on this, right? So it was, it's something that's very, very, uh, it's something that's making me think more deeply about the situation itself. Now, uh, Sunday morning, I had a dream. Okay, so I had a dream on Sunday morning, and uh, uh, I woke up. No, I didn't wake up. I was, I was taking a shower in my dream. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm just like literally take. I'm in the shower in my dreams, taking a shower and getting ready for service, right? And you know, the weird thing was. It was so real that when I woke up, I thought I was already showered and I thought I was just going to just get dressed and go to go to church kind of thing, right? And I was kind of like, huh? And I woke up and I'm like, whoa, it was so trippy that I was like, whoa, what kind of dream is this? And I woke up taking a shower, right? Like cleaning myself off. And um, after hearing the Sunday message, I was like, oh, this is the revelation, Right? The mess, you know, you guys all heard the mess. Mess so deep, so shimjonic, so refreshing. Uh, it was absolutely clear. And it was like the, I, I was like, oh, this is what it's talking about. It's this message that clears up the thoughts, clears up the wrong thinking, makes us think properly, right? And it's like, oh, okay. This is what, this is what that dream meant in the morning was, you know, the message is coming. The words is the water of life. You know, we know that water is a symbol, symbolism of the word. 
so that, you know, when it comes to, we, we've heard the lesson on baptism, right? When we know about baptism, baptism is not baptism by water, but it's a baptism of clean conscience that comes by being washed with the words of God, right? So for me, I was just like, oh, that's what that, that dream actually meant. I had the shower and I was getting myself clean because that's what's happening spiritually through the message that was being preached today. So I was super thankful, right? Because when you listen to the message, Crazy heavy message, heavy message, right? And of course, we're going to go over that in the, the Sunday uh, the, the, the Sunday message word study. We're going to go over that. So there's a lot of stuff to get into. Um, but I think the most important thing is it makes everything clear. Absolutely clear, right? And, it's, and I, I think it's something that many of us, uh, well, especially on my end when it comes to stars, it's, it's kind of the message everyone's kind of been waiting for, right? You know, like we're, you know, kind of resetting things back to like, hey, this is what it is right now, right? And, you know, it, it's almost like, you know, we had the bomb that exploded in March. And then after that happens, we're all kind of waiting for, well, is something going to respond? What's he going to say? What about this? And what about that? And, you know, with time uh, and with time, like even when we've seen the trial, with time, more and more information comes out. And, you know, Sunsim will tell us more and more clearly of what is true, what the real situation is. And, like, for me, I would say there's only one thing that I myself kind of worry about when it comes to Providence in general. Right? Because I know Providence. Uh, Providence, we are so pure, sometimes to the point of naivety, right? Where we're, whatever Sunsim says, it's like we just go super extreme in it. Right? Like, Sunsi says one thing, everyone runs like crazy towards only that thing, not looking at all the other things that you're supposed to do. Like, you know, like remember what Sunsi talked about? He's like, he told someone that he likes, you know, he was eating dried squid, and he's like, oh, I like dried skid, squid. And then people started buying him boxes and boxes of dried squid, and he had to give it away because he knows he can't eat all of it. And he, he grew sick of it because it was that extreme. And then, you know, it's like um, when, when he says, oh, I don't like it anymore, then people 100% stop buying it, right? But it's not like, you know, like we know what taste is like. Some, if you eat too much of something, you get bored of it, you try something else. But every once in a while, you want to eat that again. It's not like, it's not like he's going to stop eating it for the rest of his life. Like there's no balance. It goes super extreme. Like even when I was a head leader. This happened to me as a head leader. So, you know, in, when it, this happens in everyone's head leading. Like, whenever anyone does head leading, there's always that time when someone seems like, why don't you take care of the families? Why don't you visit their houses? And then, you know, all of a sudden, all the head leaders start planning to visit every single family home every day, every weekend. And, like, yes, it's you know, it, it, they they do what Sun seems they do what Sun seems says, but then they disregard their other duties. And the Sun seems gonna be like, but you still gotta evangelize. Well, you still gotta lecture. Like he's got it. It's almost like he has to spell it out, right? There's like we have to get to that point where we're not so extreme in one side, and then we run to the other extreme because this is when you're kind of running like a chicken with your head cut off. The best way to do it is the people that have always been doing it all the time. You know what I mean? Like you're, you've are you always been doing all the different roles you're supposed to do. When some seem like in the message, when he says that you're not visiting families, yes, the people who don't visit families, which was a lot of head leaders, they feel guilty and then they got to all of a sudden make up for all the stuff they didn't do in the past. When the best thing to do is to set it up properly so that in the future it can be done in a reasonable way, right? And that's just the thing. Uh... We are very, very obedient, and we get too extreme in stuff. Like, after I listened to the message, right? It's very deep, very heavy. Talked about the stars, and then, you, you know, the thing I got nervous about is, oh, man. So what's going to happen now is some people are going to start thinking way too deep about it or too extreme about it because um, what about stars who already got married in the past? There are stars who discuss with Sunsunim, who got permission, and who got married. And they, they're already married. They've been married for years already. Right? Like, I get nervous that people get too extreme. They're like, oh, they'll start looking down on these people. When it was clearly discussed with the heavens, with approval. It's almost like this. Imagine someone, imagine someone commits the fall, let's just say. And then uh, they get forgiven. Like, you can't hold it against them once they're forgiven. Right? When God forgives, he forgives. 
and there's it's it doesn't show anything in the heavens. There's not going to be anything saying that this person committed the fall, anything else like that. Once you're forgiven, you are forgiven. And what Sunsteep said is people do not know the power of forgiveness, of how powerful it is, right? And that's kind of the thing is like when uh, the one thing I worry about is when people get too extreme, right? And like for me is I'm like, yeah, perfect message. Very clear. It's something that resets people's hearts, right? So then we, you know, we get ourselves back on track the way we're supposed to do it. We're not thinking only according to our own thoughts, but now we're like, oh yeah, you, well, you can't, you can't forget about Jesus though. Can't forget about how he feels. Can't forget about how this is like, yeah, this is something that we have to think about, right? And we can't, we can't do things without thinking about the heavens, right? There, I, like, I even know some people already that are stars that already got permission, right? So are you, are, is, is now after this message, you think that everyone's going to start looking down on them? I, think, I don't think that's right either, right? That's between them and the heavens. And I think one of the big things that we have to take into consideration, whenever these big, big powerful bomb messages come out, uh, one of the big reasons why we have this, uh, why I started this podcast was, uh, especially was especially because a lot of times people feel like they're being judged, right? When they shouldn't be. Why? Because we're not the judge. We're not the ones who should be judging other people's servants the way the Bible says, right? Don't judge someone else's servant. You just think about yourself. But so that's why that's the only thing that I kind of worry about. Like, yeah, let people live their life. They'll do the things they've, we, we all heard the message. People should be able to make the, you know, people are going to do the things they need to do. They're going to discuss, they're going to talk to Sunseam, they're going to do all the different things, let them do what they want. But the worst part comes is when you can kind of feel that people are judging you, right? Oh, like, oh, didn't they hear the message? Oh, didn't they, didn't they, didn't they, um, don't they care about what Jesus thinks? People have to really be sensitive of the situation because like for me, super thankful clear revelation from Jesus. It is clear for me in my situation circumstance, which is my decision, right? And for every person that heard it, it's going to be different from one person to the next, right? And, you know, we're building a place here and I want everyone to think about this carefully is we have to, when you first heard the message, were you thinking about someone else? Even if you're, remember, because Jesus even said, you know, I am talking about stars, but this is for everyone. So here's the thing. When you heard the message, were you thinking about someone else? Because that's not a good sign, right? This is a place, especially MSD is a place we build so no one gets judged by others. We're all going to make mistakes. And as long as we repent and we move forward, we're fine. We move forward, right? And especially right now, when you look at a couple of the mess, like the messages coming recently, this is a time where we're not, we shouldn't be split with each other. We shouldn't be judging each other, but this is a time we should become one. We should be more unified. We should support and love each other even more, right? Is when we start to judge other people, uh, which is the thing we don't want to do. Is not the point. The point of the message wasn't for everyone to start pointing at people. That was. Would, do you think that was the actual point of the message? And the answer is no. That wasn't the point of the message. The point of the message is for each individual to hear that message, get the inspiration, hear the voice of God, and know ah. This is my future. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, this is what I need to pray about. Okay, this makes a lot more sense to me, right? And I think um, especially what has happened uh, for over the, I would say even, it's been over a year now since last September last year. This is something that a lot of people were struggling about and a lot of people were looking at like, oh my gosh, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? I'm confused about this. Sometimes he said this, but he didn't clearly say about this. And there was a lot of stuff going around, but Having it this clear, right, uh, for all of us, I think that is something that we all have to reflect, look back at our lives, right, and also recognize how much people have been struggling over this time of tribulation, right? So we struggle, and now Jesus expresses his shimjung to us, and we're like, oh, all right, we got to get ourselves back to that first love back to the first love, right? Like for me, that message was so inspiring, so moving. Uh, like you can feel it in your heart, like wow. And um, for me, I was so thankful to hear Jesus confess this type of love for us. He's confessing it, right? One thing that I, I this might sound kind of weird, 
But you know when you listen to a lot of podcasts, well, I do, I listen to a lot of podcasts, spiritual podcasts, political podcasts, you know, ph philosophical podcasts, just listening to it. And one of the big things that people talk about, like a conspiracy theory is like, oh, the great reset is coming. The great reset is going to happen in this world kind of thing, right? And I thought to myself is, I think the great reset is like what's happening right now, right? Like spiritual great reset that we're getting our minds and hearts put back on the right track, right? The great reset of the hearts of all people, especially those that follow this history, right? The great reset of our mentality, our mindsets, right? So that we can run together. Remember, one of the biggest issues we're going to face right now is we need to be able to work together, but we can't work together if we're judging each other or if we're saying things against each other, right? We have to be those that are really, really united and one, right? And it, you know, when I, when I think about united and one, it kind of reminds me of the message. When you think about betrayal of love, betrayal of love would be like, say, between us and other members in Providence is us only treating them well or only working with them when things are good. Betrayal is your love betrayed because now we're going through a difficult time. I don't want to work with you anymore, right? Or I don't like you anymore. So I think this is, they're, they're, this is like what we're going through over these next couple of months is going to be a great reset in our hearts, right? And uh, what we're doing right now, I am super thankful, super grateful. And I'm so happy that it was said. It is very clear. And, you know, people can start making decisions with the right mindset. People can pray with the right mind and heart, understanding the heaven's heart too, especially during this time of tribulation, right? And remember, I'm not talking about just stars. I'm talking about stars and non-stars all together, right? So for me, it's been a year like one year having no, like not having the absolute clarity is just, it's exhausting because it's constant mental exercise, just constantly going over these mental exercises over and over and over again, right? Like, what does that mean? What does this mean? Well, does this mean this? Does this mean this? And that's why I am super thankful. The storm, uh, I'm not going to say the storm is over. It's not, it's, not, it's passing, but it's, we're still in the storm. And it feels like, you know, when you see the clouds and they're really dark, and you can't even see the sun, but soon the clouds are slowly getting lighter that you can kind of see the light, like where the sun actually is. But you just see like the aura of it more than the actual sun. But you know, when it's super dark and stormy, the clouds are so dark that you can't even see the sun, right? Like the feeling right now is the clouds are starting to lighten up where you're starting to see the light that comes from the sun, right? You're like, eventually, like you could feel like eventually the clouds will move away and the sun will become very clear. If, if, and that, I think that's a perfect analogy, right? So in the end, for all of us here, it's all about uh, what is God's will, right? What is God's will? What does, you know, what God sees, what God hears, what God thinks, and everyone's going to receive according to their situation and circumstance. And I would say at this time, we need to unite back with the Holy Trinity, with Jesus, with the one that God has sent, unify even more than before, right? And look at these messages as a, like, I've never felt the message so personal, like Jesus just really talking to my heart, like, oh, like that is love, right? Oh, I felt like the deep hearted love of Jesus coming into me like, yeah, okay, this is it, right? This is what I've been missing. This is what I've, you know, I've, I've been wanting to experience for so long. And I think it's a great time of self-reflection, a great time of repentance, a great time of keeping that condition set for all of us. And also we got to pray for each other because some people are going to be struggling more than others. It's just true, right? Some people will struggle more than others. We're going to have this difficult time. And it is something that all of us have to deal with, right? And this is something that I really, really hope that as we're looking at ourselves and we're looking at the future, we're going to be like, hey, like one thing I'm going to guarantee you right now is this message came out and it's very strong and everything else. Like, but uh, I'm like, I'll, I'll already predict it now. I predict it now is some stars are still going to get married. I, I, I think that's a guarantee. I, I really do. I really think that's a guarantee. Why? Because, you know, this, this is what the heart should be for everyone, stars and non-stars. And some people will be very special situations and circumstances where they will have a chance, you know, they will discuss with the heavens and such. And that's their business, right? That's completely uh, their business. And because of that, what does that mean? Oh, it means that, yeah, let them, 
let people have their business when we know nothing about it and they're going to do they're going to do their things that they discuss and that's going to be for them but for us what do we have to do love each other love each other love our you know love our you know even up even to the point of loving our enemies like that's what we talked about on last thursday sermons in the sky we got to reach to that point and i really really hope that all of us too can have that type of community and mindset that even if something happens inside our community where something is definitely wrong but if the person repents we're not going to cast them aside throw them out but we will be those that really uh, have that that mentality and mindset that really wants to uh, have those open arms because we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to have those issues we deal with. And the one thing that is so comforting, like I'll tell you this, me being home with my family, one of the most uh, amazing things that I experienced like after not being home for 17 years is feeling the love of my family non-judgmental just love me they'll do anything for me they take care of like you guys seen what the food my mom cooks for me and stuff is like she does it completely out of love why because think about it i was out of like out of their lives for 17 years and when you have a situation like this i feel the community of my family and i feel safe i feel like no matter what happens they got my back and i think this is something that has to happen also in a spiritual family, right? In a spiritual family, in the same way, we need to have that type of feeling where, yeah, you made a mistake, and sometimes your mistakes are big, but we got your back, no matter what, right? As long as you don't leave, as long as you don't like, uh, you know, completely, you know, try to hurt our community, because, you know, when you hurt the, you know, as a community, if someone tries to hurt it, we defend the community. If someone tries to hurt someone inside our community, we defend that person inside our community, right? As long as it's not like that, right? Because we have no choice but to defend ourselves. But if the things that we go through in life, the things that the mistakes we make, uh, I really wish for uh, a great community, you know? Great community that is so uh, that is so loving, so accepting, so unified that yeah, we'll go through it together. We'll make mistakes, and that's fine, right? We repent, we move forward, right? And I think that's like one of the like even for me, it reminds me of that one situation where you know for the for the entire pandemic, I wasn't going. I was watching everything online, constantly online, 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 all the time, just online, right? And then, uh, you know, something brings a letter out like, uh, you should be going to church. And I'm just like, ah, all right, something said it. <laughs> and then I start, I just start going to church. I was like, what are you doing watching online when you can go to church? I was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to go to church, right? It's like, yeah, like in the end, we all have the core. We all have the same head, right? And because of that, as long as we're not, hitting the head as long as we're not hitting the body we're protecting ourselves our community like I, I think as long as that's there we we have to grow into that type of loving amazing and awesome community and i think that's one thing that we have been doing trying our best at here on uh on msd right really trying our best like yeah what is the best thing to do? What can I do? What is the best thing that can do here, right? So I really, really hope that everyone has that mentality, that mindset, and just we realize even more uh, how important, how great this time is that we're living in. And uh, one of the things that was in the message at the very end is, yeah, just see what happens when the tribulation is over. This is when our, you know, when everything kind of clears up, we're like, oh, Okay, okay, okay. So I was wrong in this thing. Oh, I was wrong in this thing here. Okay, this makes a lot more sense to me. So I hope it's something that all of us can really have our hearts and minds thinking about and that all of us will uh, really be able to uh, look carefully and clearly at, right? So it is, yeah, it's it's very, very interesting. I really, really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Yeah, leave your comments below what you guys thought about it also. And uh, I hope that we can have that mentality and that mindset 
uh, that has that loving community in mind more than any other thing that will have that as the basis of this community here too. All right. So yeah, deep message. We'll get into that to the next section. We'll go into the, the, the word study. Powerful message. So uh, let's move into the first break of the day. So let's get into, did I just say alrighty? That's like a total Canadian Jim Carrey, the mask type of thing to say. I don't know if you guys have ever watched that movie, The Mask with Jim Carrey. That's from my generation, probably in the 90s or the early 2000s, I think. But it's like, alrighty then. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the Sunday, the Sunday message word study. 
And what a message it was. The title was Learn From Me, Jesus. There are no lies. You know what the crazy part is? I wrote it down incorrectly. I put, like, it says, uh, there are no lies in love. But when I was reading it, I was like, what? There are lies in love? I was like, what does that mean? But I rechecked it. I was like, there are no lies in love. <laughs> and the last one is, find the first love. And I think this is a very, very powerful, great message. And like I said, I would say this is like the great reset. And I think this is something that's very, very powerful, very pertinent, something that we really, really need to uh, understand uh, deeply. Okay, in this situation. So, yeah. Oh, let's let's get into the message. So many things to talk about, and especially Jesus' revelation. That was that was the one that just yeah, it stuck the knife straight in the heart, and it was like, oh, I feel it, I feel it, right? So, uh, let's get into the message. So, uh, it started off with talking about what is the greatest seal, and, and I love uh, the progression of this message too, because it first talks about the most important thing, which is love, right? The seal of the rapture. It is love, right? The seal of the purpose of creation, it is love. The seal of Won Myung Dong, the design, what was it based? It was based on love. The biggest seal in the Bible is all on love, right? And we know that, especially at this time, when it comes to the time of the bride and the bridegroom, bride and bridegroom cannot happen without the final seal of love being broken. Yes, there was a seal of love broken at the time of Jesus in the first coming because that seal of love coming from servants to children was necessary to break. And, and what Jesus did was he broke that seal so that people can take, uh, take on God as their father, as the parent, right? And now at this time, the final seal is broken. And what's the final seal? Once again, it's the final seal of love taking it to the very last level, which is the level of bride and bridegroom, which is ultimately uh, focused on love itself. So, you know, that beginning part of the message was so clear. It's like, hey, what is there? if everything is based on love, think about heaven. Do you think you can go to heaven with just like a normal average type of love? Or if you're going to be a real bride, a real bridegroom, what level of love would you need at that point? And you can't go there, right? Heaven cannot, you cannot go to heaven without that type of sincere, perfect love. It cannot be average, right? And our spirits have to transform, right? How? Well, through what we do with our bodies, right? So the, the spirit transforms through the body. Our body listens to the word. Our spirits transform by listening to that word. Our body changes when we listen uh, and believe in the one that is sent and take action and those actions go into our spirit and our spirits transforms also right everything is happening according to our actions right so according to the form that we have right is it's the form that we achieve through our body will determine where we go in the spiritual world so uh, I like that one point and it's very foreshadowing is like, you know, like is don't think God is satisfied if you love according to your level, to the way that you think, right? You need to realize love at God's shimjung, that perfect love, reaching that next level. And that's the only, like if you think about it, that type of love is the only love that can save. Well, where what is an example of that love? 2,000 years ago, it's the sacrificing of Jesus, which is the example of that powerful, fiery love. And we can see that example once again today through the one that God has sent. You can only save through that type of love where that uh, you have to realize God's shimjong, like the love, the love inside God's shimjong which is a perfect love that we, not, we may not be able to understand, but at least we can understand at our level and do it according to what we realize. And as we grow in love, we realize more and more of God's shimjong of love, right? So, you know, it, it, it's really interesting because uh, Sun Tzu gave an example of him uh, like going out and, you know, taking care of the homeless people. Like he, he realized such a high level of love. And the way that the message put it is like the high level of love is respectful. I'm like, oh, right? The high level of love is respectful. It's respectful. 
right? And of course, we go into the Wednesday message from last week is what is perfect love? The seal is you must love God before he loves you. Do it with that heart. Take action just like that, right? Things are fulfilled, right? As, you know, remember, it's like, uh, is it Matthew 18, 18? Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you... Uh, Whatever you gain on earth will be gained in heaven. It happens on earth first. So whatever you lose here, all the wrong thinking, all the wrong thoughts, just to throw them, throw them away and throw them aside, that is something that we look at and say, okay, okay, right? I gotta loosen this, or else I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep this in the spiritual world, which I don't want to keep, right? So I really hope that all of us really have, you know, that we can think about this at, at that type of level. Right, things we have to loosen it here. We can't just expect everything to be gone when, it, when just because we go to the spiritual world and die. The things we keep, the things we bind, they're going to be bound here in the same way, just as in the spiritual world too. So you know, I hope that we, you know, once again that message came out. We have to seek first, and it was a great example. An analogy that was given was, hey, if you're going to go buy something at a store, the merchant doesn't know what to give you. You have to want be the one that seeks it out and you have to be the one that asks the merchant so he knows exactly what he can give you, right? And it's like same with God. You know, God isn't, you know, God is waiting for us because he can scream all day for a thousand, two thousand years, but because we're a, a physical body, we will not be able to hear it. We have to seek. We have to seek and we have to find. We have to be the ones that reach that next level. So, yeah, I, I thought that was something uh, that was powerful. Also, um, which was even an even better analogy was, hey, if the man of mission is walking through a crowded area, Jesus is not screaming at people, are you looking for the Lord? Are you looking for the Lord? No, because people won't even know either. Someone must already be seeking first, seeking the Lord first. Seeking for the answer first. And I love the answer. The answer is, the answer is, the Lord will appear through the word to the one who is looking. And I was like going, wow, like that has two huge parts in it. Number one is the Lord will appear to people through the word. So there's number one. But two will appear through the word to the one looking. Which means, you know, have, we've all experienced this before when we evangelize. We preach the word to some people, they don't even want to hear it. Why? They're not looking. Right? They're not looking. If they're, if they're not looking, even if you preach the word, like the Lord's word, the Lord cannot, uh, the Lord cannot come into them. The Lord cannot hear them. Why? I mean, not the Lord cannot hear them. They can't hear the Lord because... It's like the people who are looking, searching for something, they hear the word and everything clicks. And you're like, yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for, right? The Lord will appear through the word to the one who is looking. And I think that was a very, very uh, powerful statement that I thought too, right? So, you know, of course, the message went into what we've been hearing about the resurrection, how people believe today, when, you know, uh, how people are thinking about the Lord's second coming and such. And I, I thought this was a very big point here. It seems said that uh, it is much more difficult to find the Lord's second coming than the first coming. It's more difficult. And the answer is, of course it is. Like when you really think about it, it's like, yeah, it's pretty reasonable to think that way because people are waiting for Jesus literally to return in the body, right? Physical body coming on the cloud. They're literally waiting for that to happen. So if you're waiting for that to happen and he comes like the same way he did in the first coming through a body, can you imagine how much more harder it is when you're looking for a Jewish man with a beard, wearing a robe with a blue sash, with like really nice silky wavy hair, whatever it is. Like you're looking for the people that you see in the movies. Like, oh, Jesus should look like that. Or Jesus should look like that. And this is very interesting because there's like this person that looks like Jesus in Siberia, I think. And uh, he basically says that he is Jesus' second coming. And everyone kind of follows him because he looks like Jesus. That's the crazy part. He looks like Jesus. And that's how people can make big mistakes because they're looking for someone that looks like Jesus, which is kind of weird because Jesus is Jewish, right? He's Middle Eastern. He's not white, right? He's not black. He's not any of these. He's Jewish. He's Middle Eastern, right? So when you look at this, it's like, oh, this is really, really interesting. Like, yeah, it's true. It's more difficult to find the Lord's second coming than the first coming. 
but we know that it's going to happen in the same way because of history, repeating history, right? And we know the principles of how God works and God always works in the same way. And that's why we, only we know, right? Only we know. And now what's, what's it time for? It's time for us. Like I said, I was telling you the first segment, it's like the great reset. Everyone, it's time to seek first. Seek every day. Seek at all times. And if you seek, you will be close, right? If you don't seek, you're going to feel far from him. You got to pray. You got to ask. You got to converse. Like all these things, you have to think about them. And, you know, at this time, especially in the darkest hour, in the time of tribulation, you got to call on God, right? You got to call on God more than anyone else. Got to call on the Lord, right? And say, God, help me at this time. Help me to make the right decision. Help me to say the right things. Help me to do the right things here. This is when we connect. What's the secret? Remember, the secret, the seal is broken. We seek first and God will answer and God will connect to us, right? And I hope that, you know, that these words are not going to be so solemn and like, oh, I'm so sad. Oh, the word is so, oh, I feel like, you know, I'm being rebuked. No, you got to think the words come so that we can change. The words come so that our hearts will change. Our minds will change too. That's why. Right? So like uh, one of the points is if you deny the Lord, it's because righteousness is weak. Right. And some people might think to themselves like, well, what does that mean? But a lot of people were doing a, like when you look at especially the people who did leave, they were doing the greatest things like they were doing amazing stuff. Right. And but the one thing that we do need to understand is there are so many things that we do not see. We're only judging by what we see. But remember, we heard in the message several weeks back, the Lord does not judge by what he sees or what he hears. He judges by righteousness. Right. He judges by what is fair. What is right? And the great example was, look at the large tree that died. And, you know, Sun had to investigate it so deeply that he found that inside the ants were eating it from the inside. And if the pine tree had zero problems, of course it wouldn't fall over. Of course it wouldn't die, right? And this is one of the things that I was like going, wow, this is a heavy thing to say. And it's something that I looked at like, I'm not sure exactly who it's talking about. I'm not, and I don't think it's talking about every single person, but it's like people who left, people who denied, right? Like, remember, it's, it's talking about the large trees that died. They were being eaten from the inside. So remember, you can't see the inside. We only see what's on the outside. People who left, people who had big missions. And he said, yeah, there are those that had sexual, like opposite sex problems or sexual problems, right? And it didn't say exactly who it was, but all we know it's people who had big missions, right? Those people are the ones that had sexual problems, right? And it's it's very interesting because it's like because of these, you know, did it happen? Obviously, these these problem these sexual problems don't happen from the beginning. It's the the next sentence I liked was you failed to grow properly on your own. You failed to grow properly on your own. And then you grew sick of diseases because you didn't grow properly on your own, right? And it's true. Dude, does anyone really like deny? Does anyone leave overnight? No. It takes a long time, a long time of the, the tree being eaten up by these ants constantly coming in from the inside. It takes a long time. And for me, I was just like, yeah, that's so true. We don't know what's going on and we're not the judge. We're not there to say, oh my gosh, these are all wicked people. They had all these sexual problems. No, that's not what we're supposed to do. It's a warning for us, for our future, more than looking bad on the people who have left. And I say, what some said in the past is so perfect. Do not hate people, hate the sin. Do not hate people, hate the sin. And I think that is the perfect way of, of seeing it. Because I talked about this last week. Do you, you know, some of you talked about it in this week's message about going to hell and realizing like no one should go there. 
No one should, we would never want anyone to go there. Sasim said he spent like what, like one day there or one hour there. He forgot about all the difficulties and, 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 and things he was struggling with while in the world. He couldn't remember a single one of them because it was that shocking how bad it was in hell. Do we want everyone to go there? No. Having the heart of God is wanting them to repent, wanting them to come back. That's the heart of God. That's the will of God, right? Like Ezekiel 33, was it 33, 13? What is it? Ezekiel, uh, I want to read it word for word, right? I think it's, is it 13... Ezekiel 13, uh, Ezekiel 33, 11. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? Like that is the heart of God. All right, 33, 11. Not a single person should go to hell. And that's, we should realize that deep Shimjung too. And, you know, it was really sad when he said people, they were loving someone else even though they were testifying for God. That's a really sad thing. So, you know, and, you know, this is where it comes to us now. Like, we can look at this and say, oh, it's all about the people that left. But then he says, living an average life of faith you already are afflicted with disease that will lead to death. Just living the average life of faith. Oh. Yeah, that's, it's an everyone. This is an everyone message. Do you want to go to an average place in the spiritual world? So it's, it's a, you know, there's a lot of just these deep things that God, God, brings to our hearts and it's like that's so true that's so true being a slave in Egypt right that means basically you're a slave you're dead you're a slave to sin but going to Zin you're no longer a slave but Zin is just the average life of faith you don't even have your own home but Canaan is for those that live with all your heart will in life those are the solid living there why? because you have to fight for it. 31 tribes. There's no other way around it. And that's why even living the average faith is also, you know, having already being inflicted with a disease. Whew. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great message. And, I, you know, it, it is piercing. It is things that we have to think about. But on top of that, it is the most relevant and proper message for right now. It's the most proper message. It is the clear message. So I hope that all of us too, that we can listen to the words, take action on these words, repent really well, right? And, you know, we have to be those that properly serve, properly love, properly give glory to God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to the man of mission. And we got to do that properly, right? So... Now, I hope it's something that all of us, you know, will really, really be able to uh, take in from this week's message. Now, we move into the revelation, Jesus' revelation to us, right? About keeping promises with God, even if it's harmful. And we've heard this before. So this is not something that's new, right? Keep promises with God, even if it's harmful. But it's the thing that we need to be reminded of, right? The special, remember, special revelation to all brides of providence, not just for stars, but it's the example being used. But it's for all brides, right? So, you know, it, it first talked about like, like one of the big points in the very beginning is like, I saved you from death, right? I saved you from the domain of death. But were you really shaken by tribulation? You know, even if tribulations come, live firm faith, right? Live with the firm faith. Why are you being shaken? And this, the beginning part is talking about, yeah, the tribulations came, don't lose your faith. Like that's like the basics of it, right? Yeah, the tribulation came, don't lose your faith, right? Are you really shaken by these things just because tribulation came, 
right? And then it goes into, and then on top of it, we have those that made promises, right? So we need to think about it in two ways. Not just stars who promised, but also what are the promises we made when we came to this history? I will live for, I will do this. I will make sure to do this, right? This is where the first love has lost. Promises could be broken, right? And how many of us, when we first came to this history, said we will live with you until the end, right? And he's like, yeah, in the end, does anything else need to be said besides what, what, I, what you just said, that you would live with me until the end, right? And perfect, uh, perfect analogy between us and God is, imagine if you're already married, and then all of a sudden, times get difficult and you say, oh, I'm going to live with someone else now. Now you made your own choice. Why are you shaken by this? Right? So, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very heavy. And the reason why it's so heavy because it's very rare that there is a full opening of the Lord's heart to us. Like, this is what I really, really feel. Right? Do you think that just the almighty, omnipotent, omniscient God and Jesus the Messiah are just regular people? Right? Don't look at us according to your thoughts and your perceptions. They are absolute divine deities. Right? People who break their promises are doing it according to their own thinking, are tormented, and they're doing it according to their own actions. And we have to be like, hey, you said you'd do it, but now you're going to say you don't like it anymore? Why are you breaking promises? Because if you break promises with us, then we're not going to keep our promises in love to you. That's a, that's a strong, like, powerful statement. If you can't keep that promise, we're not keeping our promises with you. Which is what a normal, what a, you know, basically it's like divorce. After you sign the papers of divorce, it's done. It's done, right? This is about us and our faith with God, our faith with the Lord. Right? All of us, every single one of us here received Jesus as the bridegroom. And we've been brides until now. We have to keep it, keep it going, no matter how difficult it gets and do it into the future too. Where did you lose your first love? Where did you lose it? Right? This is the time period of love. This is a time where love is the ultimate seal. And we're going to do this for a thousand years. Don't break it. Right? And then we see that uh, first video. You know, if you know, you've been, we've all been called from the former faith into here. And so many signs and miracles, judgments, we saw everything. And here is the Lord coming down, riding on the brides of the pro brides of province in this history. Right? Look at all the things that have been made until now. And you know, Jesus is giving us that hopeful picture again, like it's here, it's still here. It's still the history. Don't lose sight of it. Like one thing I don't want people to do is all of a sudden, this powerful message is going to be reduced to, uh oh, the stars, the stars, oh my gosh. No, no, it shouldn't be reduced to that. That, that is something between each and every individual and God. We have to think about what is the message God is trying to put through your mind right now. And he's saying, look, look at the 1 million people that gathered in Yoido Square. Look at, look at it. I've shown you evidence that Sunseam was there, sitting there even through a picture. It's been 45 years since. The 70s, Jesus rode on the, 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 the cloud of Christianity for the last time. One million gathered. 1.5 million gathered. Two million gathered. Revival speakers from around the world came to speak, just like Billy Graham. We saw the video of Billy Graham. 
but they still don't know I came back. Even though many of them saw my spirit, they only saw the spirit of the New Testament. But they don't know I'm back in spirit again. Receive me as a bridegroom by knowing. We made our promises and we have to push through. Push through. Right? Even Sun Sim too knew Jesus absolutely. Knew him absolutely. And that's why he lived through all the most difficult times. All the difficult times. And that's why the keys to the kingdom of God were given to him, right? The thousand-year wedding banquet's already started. Right? Don't leave and go to someone else. And if you think in the big picture, is like people leaving this history too. Don't leave and go to someone else. Right? Don't abandon the bridegroom in the middle of the wedding banquet. Why are, you, why are you looking for someone else? Can such a person be able to live in the eternal heaven? It says, all those who promise to love me and the Savior fail to love 100%. All. Right? So we have to Understand the deep shimjung of the Lord's heart. We got to get back to the first love. Got to get back to the promise that was made to God. Right? Don't listen to those that change their heart. Because then when you listen, your hearts will change and it leads to death. Right? There's going to be people out there like, they're going to, you know, they leave, right? They eventually leave. In this time period, if we cannot achieve this victory of love, then how could we be considered like a bride when the bride is based absolutely on love and nothing else? We have been saved from death. And then there was like, do you, do you even know who your teacher is? And that was just a powerful rhetorical question. Do you know the sorrow of my spirit? who does not have a body. How betrayed would I have felt when I saw brides of love wavering, seeing people go on their own path, doing their own heart's desire. How betrayal is one of the strongest emotions or strongest, like the worst things you can do when it comes to love. So, you know, it's like that question, why are you trying to break away from me? So even for me, I was, oh, there's that one statement. is like, there's like over 3 billion people on the entire earth who follow me. I saw you and I came with hope after 2,000 years and chose you especially. We are all representatives of billions. Don't change your heart. So, yeah, that's, you know, when people leave this history, that is the worst because that is the absolute betrayal. So I was just like, what a powerful message. It, it's so deep. It's so deep. Yeah, he says that if you left for the opposite sex, you're paid according to your deeds. Those that deceived me. And they said, oh, no, it's not true. It's not true. These are just baseless rumors. They're deceiving God. So we have to be those that are true, true to our promises, true to God. And I think this is one of the best and greatest resets. Like, hey, we went through some crazy stuff. Some of our hearts wavered. Some of us were thinking this or that. And, you know, it's like, hey, come back to your senses. Let me share with you what I've actually been going through watching every single one of you. Right? So, it's, it's something that we have to open our hearts to once again. And we have to kind of bring ourselves back to that mentality and mindset. So we have to learn from Jesus. We need to repent of the things we've done wrong. And we need to take action. We do. 
So, you know, we don't want to come out before Jesus as liars. Because I, I, th- I thought that one point there was like, if you're, if, if you're not going to choose me, like if you're eventually going to leave me anyways, then why would I have chosen, I would have chosen a different person to live with instead of you. Right? So take action, repent. And then you'll be chosen again kind of thing, right? So we have to be those that hold on tightly. Right? Hold on tightly to the love that God has given to us. His greatest eternal love. So, and, and you know, there's some, you know, some things at the end. You know, obviously we know what this is, but a lot of you won't know this, but some of you uh, probably have heard this directly, but uh, some said someone delivered a revelation, but it was missing an entire section. And that's why people got confused. Right? And that's why for these people, you know, the rapture broke and the golden heaven was broken too. But now that all the tribulations are done, everything is revealed. Right? So we have to be those. Bring ourselves back to the first love. Right? We have to be absolutely clear of sin and clean. Only those that didn't complain entered Canaan. And everyone else who were like them, right, the ones that complained, ended up living in the desert instead. So I hope that all of us will, especially during this time of tribulation, we have to be even stronger. Especially during this time of tribulation, keep the hope, right? Because once we lose love, we lose everything. So we got to take action, right? This is the greatest history of love, the final work of God, and how lucky all of us are to be born at this time. And like, think about this, of all the people born in throughout the entire history of the entire world, and they say that, Most likely, there's only like 100 billion people that actually lived, ever lived, like uh, ever, right? They say say it's about 100 billion. We were born not only, like are we chosen, but you have to understand we were born at the right time because only people born at this time can be chosen out of all the other people chosen, right? We are in the greatest history of love. We are lucky. We are fortunate to be born at this time. And I hope that all of us, yeah, we're blessed. We are blessed. Yeah, if anything, don't be scared of people. You know, like when these people come to you and say, oh, oh my gosh, they're threatening. No, be afraid of God. (laughs) Don't be afraid of people, right? Satan is using those bodies. Satan is using the things, uh, the physical things to break our love. They couldn't come back. So I hope that all of us will uh, really... Look at this message once again and see how powerful this message truly and really is. It's such a great message and it's so timely. And I think it's the, it's like, like I said, it's the great reset. And I think it's so necessary at this time after all the confusion, all the things that happen. And I know that a lot of us, we weren't confused in our faith. We're just confused what is going on, right? And it just needed time. And with time, all the answers come out, right? So I hope this is something that all of us will really be able to uh, take in, read over the message again, no matter how hard it is, and that we'll continue to have, you know, that unfailing, unshaking love uh, that will not change and not turn, okay? So there it is, guys. That is uh, the Sunday message word study. Hope you guys really, really enjoyed that. Uh, great message. And hope that everyone uh, gained a lot from it too. Okay. So let's move into the second break of the day.
Okay, so what a deep word study we had today. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. Leave a uh, leave some uh, comments below if you have any questions about that too. We're going to get into the final section that happens every single Monday. This is 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan over there in San Francisco. Uh, today, he's going to talk about the word. Uh, and about internet ministry and share some of Sunstein's messages from 2019 uh, when Sunstein was touring campuses and giving messages about evangelism. All right? So everyone all the way over there for San Francisco, please welcome Eddie Kwan with 2G Talks. Hello, everyone. I hope that you are all having a great uh, weekend and getting into the new start of the week. Um, and with this on 2G Talks today, uh, I wanted to talk about, I guess, the, the kind of the, some of the central components of the message, uh, as well as uh, reflecting on the past, on the word that's been given to us, too. Uh, I think it's, uh, for me, it's been really great that, um, you know, the Lord and the Trinity have continually begin giving uh, a message on that same premise, learn from me. Um, like, I think even when it first started, it was like something that I think I really needed to hear. And so I'm really happy that it's been like going on since, right, since like July until now. Uh, and, you know, who knows when that that part of the title will go away. Of course, it's like it can be implicit in every message, right? But the fact that they're that, you know, the Trinity are making it explicit uh, really uh, is something that I'm, I'm thankful about. Um, but uh, even this week too, I think it's kind of, it seems like kind of a shift in the direction, but I was really happy about it too. Um, you know, with this concept of like really to finding our, our first love and right, that there's no uh, lies, right, in, in love, uh, I think it's something that um, as providence, we really need to uh, consider once again, too, uh, with this new, uh, I mean, not new, but another emphasis that we've been having on ministry and internet ministry and like everyone's fired up, right? Uh, and I think we need to learn how to do it from, you know, the head. Um, and so it's interesting because uh, this past week when I was like cleaning out my, my closet, um, I, I found this uh, transcript from like, I think it's from like 2019 or so, right? So like, uh, this was like during a time when something was doing like a tour of many regions. Uh, so someone, I, I don't know who it was, they compiled a, a list of kind of key messages that something gave to a lot of campus departments uh, for the purpose of evangelism like all throughout korea um, and i think this document can help us even at this time as we're trying to do internet ministry right because we're trying to um target a wide net of people right and catch all kinds of different fish uh, and so the things that we use to draw these people in they have to fit the kinds of people that we're uh, drawing in right and so i think one thing in particular that i notice is um for us in AP and for many people, actually, for uh, the vast majority of people that I've met in like the Western countries, uh, they were evangelized from the former faith. Right. So most of them already had some level of foundation in the Bible. Uh, and so the people who were not former faith people uh, before coming to this history, um, th there aren't as many of them. Right. So their stories are a little bit different. Right. And the ways that we would uh, evangelize them were different, too, because something we actually talked about that um, in, in 2019. Right. Like for those who are are from the former faith, you kind of need a lot of like uh, the Bible, like scriptures, and you need to like break it down for them uh, and have them understand like the, the Bible clearly and use the Bible as reference, among other things. But he it, it said that for those who are like Gentiles, you don't really need to. Um, refer to the bible right away in the act of actually evangelizing them like that kind of comes after they develop trust in the bible and stuff like that right and then that makes perfect sense right like for people who were not part of the former faith and you know or they might be but they don't really have a strong uh like understanding of the bible referring to something that they don't understand and maybe don't they don't actually believe in yet it wouldn't really do it well Right. And so I think I kind of had an example from uh, yesterday, uh, like I, I saw some of my friends uh, from like high school who we've still been, you know, pretty close since we graduated high school. Some of them I ended up going to the same university as too. Uh, so we have a long history together. Um, and, you know, some of them, they're, they're getting up there in age two, right? Like, <laughs> and so some of them, they're, um, they've been moving into different houses. Um, many of them are getting engaged. Right? It's kind of, 
I think some it's 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 put some of our other friends on edge, right? That's so many that we are getting engaged, uh, like back to back, right? And so we we have a lot of weddings to go to maybe in the upcoming uh, few years and such. Um, but when we saw them, right, it was uh, like I said, I think for some people when we were hanging out. The fact that some people's lives are going through so much change was kind of like, you know, it makes you it makes you think sometimes like, oh, like, where am I going? Right. That's definitely a possibility and a thing that can happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think I shared last week. But when, uh, you know, a visiting pastor was here, he taught uh, our Milky Ways, the Bible study, and he taught the, the Bible study of Elijah and the Ravens. Right. And so even within that context, too, one of the things that he I remember he emphasized really strongly to our our uh, to our Milky Way, right? But it was very impressionable was this idea of not comparing, right? And he's drawing on like the, the scripture after uh, Elijah, you know, did everything, but then he like became really discouraged uh, and he like lies down to sleep and he like talks to, to uh, God about like how he, he's alone, right? And so he starts like comparing his situation uh, to like others. And he says, I'm the only one left. So he, he no longer centers on God and he centers on, on himself, right? And he loses the strength that he had. Um, and so I think it's a very poignant message. But even in terms of like the practical application and everyday use, it's, it's, it's very possible too, right? Because when I was like hanging out with my friends, like, um, I, I was so sincerely, like, congratulating them on, like, everything, right? Like, the friends that we were visiting, they just got engaged, and they just moved into the house together, and they remodeled uh, the whole house, and it looks super amazing. Um, and so, like, because I think that they could feel that, um, that I was being very sincere with everything, right? You know, like, because, like, you know, many people in the world, they do crazy things too, right? It's easy to be jealous of each other. It's easy to... Uh, to say this or that or, or say it in a way that it doesn't seem really true uh, but because it felt sincere uh, I think uh, the the door to their hearts remain open over time right it stays open right because it, like one small thing can close that door and it can cause them to like not want to open up to you and so this kind of like goes to the idea of evangelizing and I think it applies for both Christians and non-Christians too but there are people who uh, really need to see uh, the kindness of God uh, exemplified to them to have that heart opened up over time, right? It has to make sense and, and it can't be fake, right? So it, it's like the, the idea of that, like the, the, the love, the truth in love has to be uh, there. Uh, you can't do things like falsely and you can't just do things out of a pretense. Right? And like, I think if you just try to um, be kind for a little bit, if you just try to love but you try to distort it or try, you're trying to cover up something or uh, only trying to do to put on a face, it really doesn't work out. Like, <laughs> I don't know who it was. Oh, I think, I think, I don't know if you guys um, know of him. He's like kind of like this, uh, he, he's like, he, he does many things. He's like an actor. He's like a, uh, you know, on screen sort of person. Uh, Ricky Jervis, I think. But one of the things he said, or, or maybe it wasn't him, but it was someone like him, someone who kind of is like kind of uh, witty, but kind of, um, sarcastic and maybe some kind of sometimes kind of rude he said that even he is good on screen for like half an hour right even he can be lovable for half an hour right even though like he's normally this very crass and kind of cranky person and so that's like the same with each of us too like all of us of course we can be nice and we can do all these things for other people for a little bit but then how much can we go on if that's not a natural part of who we are right so one of the other things that something being shared I, this was not at the same university as the other one, uh, but at another university. Um, and I think this is really powerful um, because this was all for campus students. But I think this applies to a lot of people, especially as we advertise online. Right. And so in, in many of these, these different uh, things that something we shared, he was really trying to uh, help us to understand the specific position of campus students. Right. Like college is a time when you're really learning like a lot. 
right? And learning about the world and, and experiencing it and trying to figure it out in your own way. Like people do this in, very, in, in a variety of ways, right? Some people are heavily focused on, on money and they're trying to like really develop themselves. And I think that's kind of common nowadays, right? They really wanted to make money well, right? So that's their understanding of the world. But in, in, in essence, they're trying to get ahead and they're trying to learn about the world. And But before in the past, right? Call it was kind of a time where you were really trying to figure out, out life and trying to uh, understand about concepts more clearly and then maybe there was a less of an emphasis on like preparing to get a job like right away from from the time that you were in college but whatever the case might be like people are trying to learn right so it just d- depends on how we teach it to them too and so one thing that something we shared is like you know in the world people teach one but they don't do other right and so he talks about like religion and science right as a, as, a, as an example but he said there are two kinds of philosophy right whether it's religion or science or something else uh and which are idealism and existentialism right but then however it, under god right with god ideal as well as existence all belong to god and i remember when i read this in 2019 this was such a powerful thing because this is kind of what i was actually studying and I think, like, when we're young and when we're in the world, we do all of this, like, conceptual study. Like, we just try to learn the theory. Uh, but then, like, when you actually go out in life, many times those theories don't pan out the way that it was taught. But the thing that we have in the Word is 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 this coming together of the theory and the practice, right? And, like, you know, as we know, faith without deeds is dead. Uh, but we have to put this into practice, otherwise they're just empty words. Uh, and so I think something that we've seen in something is that there's no separation of this theory and of this uh, of like how he lives there's no separation of the love and truth and that's something that we have to fine tune to the uh, to our absolute uh, highest ability right and so i really hope that this is uh, helpful to everyone and that in your own capacity that you can do this like combining the love and the truth together the 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 practice and the work together too like no matter what uh, position you're in in now right no matter what circumstance you are in like you don't have to go out and do like the hardest thing right away but uh, develop that consistency in doing this and develop the skill of being able to do it even in, in a small way in a real way uh, and like you know this is what actually helps with evangelism too and this is like both the the foundation setting as well as like the finishing touches of this whole process right like um, I, I was talking to you know uh, many of the guys and past this guy as well about like this this internet ministry efforts and you know we want a lot of high polished product to go out into the world and bring many people in and i think um so i hope that many people are excited about internet ministry and and for those who are let's say maybe kind of anxious or or worried about it too yeah like don't don't be right and so think of it as as a a fun thing but uh really know you can also support it through prayer and um, it doesn't have to be, of course, you know, something you said to, for everyone to make channels. And I think that's, uh, that's a great thing too. Um, and I think, but I think many people can also work together, uh, to form, uh, things together too, right? So that way you're contributing to internet ministry and, you know, and like even in the world too, like the, the biggest productions and stuff in the world, they require lots of people, right? To work together. And I think this is also a place where we can uh, practice the, the message that he gave this week and last week, right? And be in harmony with each other and like support each other and develop something together in this way. So I hope that every Everyone listening all across the world uh, can have a great start to this week that this is something that we can pray about because prayer will change everything right and so i really hope that you know we can support internet ministry we can support each other uh, and support all of providence and uh, the lord uh, with these kinds of prayer with these kinds of actions uh, that show our love right providence's love that agape love that the lord talked about um yesterday as well and so i thank you guys and i hope that you have a great start to this week and that we can do things with confidence like one of the things that my friends told me is like eddie you're so confident and then like it was kind of shocking because i'm kind of at a point where i'm not super confident in a lot of things right like uh, i'm still preparing for law school and it it is quite nerve-wracking and stuff too but they're like eddie you're so confident i we love it and i was like oh shoot yeah yeah i'm confident <laughs> right? so in a way it kind of helped me to discover something that i should do that i haven't been doing uh, but then i hope that everyone else feels the same way too you know, that they can carry themselves and do things in a way where they're confident and that they can gain strength from doing that 
because we know where that confidence comes from. And thank you, Eddie, for a wonderful episode of Tucci Talks once again. Very insightful and things that uh, I think a lot of people will be commenting on. Uh, he's just doing such a great job. He's almost going to be at two years of doing Tucci Talks. So we did have a discussion of, of a new direction that he can take to. All right. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us uh, today's Monday podcast. I hope you guys have an amazing and awesome day. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the